feeling the diverse charm of this city that fuses tradition and modernity. We've come to the last stop of our journey along the canal, Angjo. In this ancient city that looks so young, we'll visit Chen's younger cousin. He's a food blogger, integrating fine food and culture with new media. I decide to help him with a webcast on food related to the canal. We meet on the ancient Gongchen Bridge, which marks the end of the canal. The Hangzhou dishes in Grandma's home is the first stop of our tour. River food is the highlight of Hangzhou cuisine. The crystal clear shrimps coupled with the fragrance of West Lake Longjing tea burst forth a unique charm in the mixtures of ingredients. Canal nourished food merges with sauces. The fish meat is rich and soft. Sliced boiled chicken and tea scented chicken represent a mixture of southern and northern cooking techniques, bringing out the taste of chicken to the extreme. Not to mention the classic Hangzhou dish braised duck with soy sauce. We tell our viewers that all these delicacies mingle with creativity with tradition. After the meal, we come to the Handicraft Museum. The canal has not only brought a blended flavour to Hangzhou, but also given Handicraft a new lease of life. You can try your hand at drawing the canal on an oiled paper umbrella. Or take a shot at forging handmade scissors under the instruction of a master. Then we come to Zhao He Street. This neighborhood, renovated during the improvement of the canal, is secretly blessed with an easy way of life, like a hidden treasure. As we have afternoon tea by the canal, we find that delicacies nearby can also be classy and refreshing. The canal in Hangzhou joins tradition and modernity. Let's take a water bus and see a different Hangzhou. In the blink of an eye, the traditional style houses by the canal give way to towering buildings revealing to me the full extent of diversity in this prosperous city. The canal has brought vitality and inclusiveness to the city, as well as delicacies from all parts of China. Fine foods of the entire nation and even the entire world are gathered here. Hot, refreshing exquisite or rich flavoured. Diverse eating patterns are integrated into concepts of living and tasty dishes can be delivered to every corner of the city. In this city at the southern end of the canal, I can taste authentic northern food. Instant boiled mutton, which I miss in Beijing, flows on the canal to dining tables in Hangzhou. Neither is the roast duck is exclusive to Beijing. We have also had a taste of the once missed crayfish and barbecue of all styles entices our tasting buds at nightfall. This canal city is attracting more people, accommodating every interesting way of life with a more inclusive spirit. The canal of Hangzhou connects the water systems of the entire city. Amid the lights of myriad homes, colourful scenes of life are acted out on the stage of the busy city. The canal is connecting China and the rest of the world. As we take photos in front of all these splendours, laughing merrily, we receive a call from Chen's mum. She invited us and the whole family for a gathering in Yangzhou on the mid-autumn day. I know that the journey on the canal is coming to an end and that it's time to go home. On the mid-autumn day, we take a high-speed train back to the home of Chen's parents in Yangzhou. 
they greet us with usual hospitality. Chen's uncle has bought her favourite spicy chicken and big cup from Taijuao. Her grandparents are also arriving with simple delicacy from Wuyang. The whole family are going to bring their talents into full play for the gathering tonight. We help each other in the kitchen. All the family members are showing off their skills to bring all the delicacies of the canal we have met to the dining table. Common cattails, carps, chassin, pancake, fried rice and mooncakes are all present. This family feast brings together fine foods from both the south and the north. Just like a concentration and integration of all favours along the canal. Symbolising the care and nostalgia of families in the tender night. Family members separated for years are toasting each other and tasting homely flavours. Both southern and northern flavours are mingled at this moment. Friendship between Chinese and foreigners is sublimated on this occasion. I've spent an unforgettable reunion night with my Chinese family. In my journey on the canal from north to south, I relish the taste of diverse cuisines and the flavour of daily life. The canal integrates happy encounters about food into everyone's life. It flows gently, telling of bumper harvests of fish and rice and the stories of hometowns. It silently remembers the stories of all Chinese families. Families are born and reunited thanks to the canal. The Grand Canal is also my family. 